In this video, we'll be going over the new Monopolies and Corporations game mode that was added in the January 2021 update for Civ 6. We'll be going over how to plan around setting up your industry, your corporation, and eventually your Monopoly. So let's go ahead and get started. We will be playing on DD difficulty as Poundmaker, and we'll be playing on a lakes map standard settings with 12 city states and 5 AIs. The only the only setting that I've adjusted is the number of city states, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, Poundmaker receives a free trader with the pottery technology, so that will allow us to hop in a little quicker to the uh, corporations and monopolies game mode. And the reason for that is that, oops, wrong window there. So the reason for that is, is you cannot build an industry improvement until you have unlocked currency. And since you get the boost for making a trade route, you won't have to worry about building a trader specifically. Let's take a look at our starting spot here. And we have one luxury resource here, which is the elephant, which is ivory. You're going to be more likely to want to build an encampment in that in a city if you have this particular industry set up. And then let's go ahead and explore over this way. So now we've got two salt resources here. One of them can be reached by the starting city, the other cannot. To set up the industry, you will need to have two improved tiles of the same luxury resource, but they don't have to be under control of the same city. You just have to have two of them across all of your territories combined. But do keep in mind that the bonus for the industry will attach to the city that has control of the tile where that improvement is built. So if you are wanting the bonus to attach to a particular city, you'll have to make sure that that city has at least one copy of that luxury resource. So we are getting ready to set up our second city, and let's see how the Corporation and Monopolies mode affects our decision making here. So just a real quick rundown on how we got here. We've discovered two tribal villages, one of which was very fortunate and got us a relic there, which allowed us to get an early pantheon, which allowed us to get this early free settler because we were the first to discover the religious settlements pantheon. So we got this free settler, so we have a relatively early settler out here. I sort of walked into this dead end here, so it cost us a few turns where we could have settled already. And then we got also a free scout unit with uh, another tribal village that was up here, and we're working on clearing out this barbarian encampment here. So we have finished animal husbandry and mining. Animal husbandry revealed horses right here. And now let's take a look at how the corporations and monopolies mode is going to affect uh, our city placement here. So now you can see here the capital has both salts within working distance. And if we place here, we can actually work one salt at the capital and one salt here at um, a second city. So the salt, if you remember, is a plus 30% uh, bonus to growth and three, or sorry, plus 20% uh, population growth and three to housing. So um, that could be placed in either city because we could place the industry on top of either one of these and, and this could attach to either city. Now we have another elephant here, so we could also attach the 30% military unit production to either city. So this gives us a flexible option of setting up industries in both cities uh, once we have currency unlocked. So we're also going to be able to settle upon a geothermal fissure here, which is going to give us a bit of a science boost. The only drawback here is that if we settled one farther back this way, we could set up a industrial zone triangle here, where settling here, we are not in distance to do that because the aqueduct would be here and the aqueduct would be here and we can't well at most yeah so n the aqueducts will not be close enough if we place this far out but i think that that is farther down the road and it's worth giving that up to take this extra uh geothermal fissure science tile because otherwise what will happen is we'll have just an unworkable tile here uh, because the geothermal fissure can't be worked till much later in the game so let's go ahead and settle that there so we've just built our second improvement on the second luxury resource of one type, which gives us two 
AI resources now, but we haven't yet researched currency, so we did not get the trigger yet to build an industry. Now, since I don't have a builder, even if I did have it researched, I would have to build another builder because the builder is the one that places that additional improvement for the industry on top of an existing improved luxury resource. So that's where we are at now. You see we've discovered Petiti up here and it's in a nice spot where there doesn't seem to be any AI around it. So it looks like we'll be able to settle that. And uh, we've also met Cyrus, um, although we don't know where he is exactly. But there are a few things that we can tell from his score here. One, that he must have gotten into some tiff with some barbarians and not done that well because he's had a very low military score for being on deity difficulty. And two... Um, he must have either had a natural wonder or has already built a holy site and a shrine because if you recall, I got a relic early on in the game and I only have an 83 faith bounce and he has 124. So he's generating a lot of faith. One quick thing to note regarding the creation of industries, if you control two resources, you are still able to trade one of those resources away and create the industry. So the fact that you don't have two of them um, just with one extra sitting around won't impact whether or not you can create the industry improvement. So if you are used to remembering to actually sell your luxury resources to the AI, which I frequently forget to do, uh, you can feel free to do that without it impacting your ability to create an industry. I'm getting ready to build my third city right here, and I'm going to do something that's probably not the most efficient play, but I just want to illustrate with the new new building here. So I don't have it researched yet, but there is the new building here for this new district called the Preserve, which grants three housing based upon appeal and culture bombs neutral neutral um, tiles and increases their appeal by one. So the first building you can build on this is the Grove, which grants one food, one faith to adjacent unimproved charming tiles and two food, two faith, and two culture for uh, adjacent unimproved breathtaking tiles. So it's probably a more efficient play to settle right next to this and immediately start getting the culture. But just to illustrate the new district, what I'm going to do is I'm going to settle far enough away. And because the, um, the preserve ca um, can't be placed adjacent to a city center, I'm going to actually settle farther away from this than I normally would. And I'm not going to buy these tiles. I'm actually going to settle out here. And then I will place a preserve right here to buff the appeal of these two tiles. And then I'll settle back around the other side and do the same thing over there. So it's probably better to immediately start working those tiles. But i um, just going to try this out with the, the new district. It's more of a, a longer term play. It's probably a net loss given the amount of turns I'll, I would lose on working those tiles. Although I think they should still get the appeal buff even if I... Um, buy the tile instead of waiting for the culture bomb. So this is uh, we'll test it out because this one is not this one is just charming. So we'll see if that buffs to um, buffs to breathtaking even if it's already under my control. So we're gonna go ahead and settle here and just wanted to illustrate that not directly relevant to the the uh, corporations and monopolies mode but it is relevant to some of the new content so we are about to complete currency here which will give us the ability to create industries and we have builders out to create those we have completed improvements on both salts and on both ivories so if you recall the salt will give the bonus population growth and a housing and the ivory will give the plus 30 percent to building military units so we have the option as we discussed before placing these in either city what we will probably do is place the the growth buff in the capital and the military buff over here and then build a barracks over here and that makes more sense because we have more known civilizations that could aggress from that side over here. So those are the options that we have for industries right now. So let's go ahead and do that. So when we uh, when we finish currency here, and it is unfortunate in order to 
sort of speed up here, I took Monumentality as my Golden Age so that I could purchase with uh, civilian, units, civilian units with faith. Um, and it looks like that might cost me getting a, a religion. So that is a, a little bit unfortunate, but probably worth it because that uh, Monumentality discount is is pretty good. Plus the cheaper uh, being able to purchase with faith, obviously, as well. So we completed currency. Let's go ahead and I guess we might as well finish archery here. And now we will have the option here. So the salt is going to be the buff to growth in the city. So we're going to go ahead and do the ivory industry over here and then the this one here 20 percent growth and plus three housing in the host city so go ahead and set that up i'm surprised that doesn't give you error score the first time you set one of those up but so now we have 20 percent growth and plus three housing in this city so we can see now we have 10 housing i don't know if the growth shows up on the modify other growth bonuses yep 20 percent right there so that is nice so that applies prior to the modified food for per turn so food consumption of 10 food need to grow population 69 so we have six surplus and then 20 percent onto our surplus Housing multiplier of 1, so 7.2 surplus. And there we are with our first industry. We now have our fourth settler, and that will give us an opportunity to look for more, uh, look for more expansion of our industries. And right now we have cotton over here improved, which is, again, the military buff, the same as ivory is giving us over here. Now, even if we did have a cotton source in this city, you cannot have more than one industry in the same city. So we couldn't stack that military buff, though I believe it could stack later via products, which you can put in stock exchanges, but you need a great merchant and then a, uh, to create the product. Um, and I, first you have to make a uh, corporation, I believe, which I will show later here, hopefully. And then gypsum here gives a plus buff to buildings, 30% uh, buff to buildings in that city, I believe. Now there's a gypsum source over here, as well as an opportunity to expand into diamonds and another easy diamond source over here. Now there's a cotton source over here, and that would allow us to settle the other side of Petiti. So I think that is what we'll do. And we did do that test earlier on the Grove and you did not have to actually culture bomb the tile to get that appeal buff. If you already had control of the tile, it will still give it the appeal buff there. So that's where we are. So we're gonna head over here and settle another city over there and expand into cotton. And um, it looks like we might be trying to get a military surge up here by creating two, um, of the military buff cities and then swapping the products in to make uh, a city that can generate military really fast but we'll see so we haven't settled our fourth city yet but we have our fifth city here so we can do some planning around how we want to expand our industry some more so we've got diamonds here and diamonds here but we don't have any diamonds worked yet now this will give, if we come down this direction, this will give us a third ivory, and you need three before you can upgrade into a corporation from an industry. And you also have to have, I believe it is, um, if it's economics unlocked. So once you have economics, you should be able to upgrade to a corporation. So it's, it's a little ways down the tree there. But we can plan ahead and get additional ivory, and that will also give us the opportunity to expand into olives. And olives, I believe, are 
um, just once. Olives are civilian unit production. So that's an interesting one. Um, in order to get two sets of olives, there's one here and there's one here. So there's no way to make it stretch to hit both of them, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that would be really nice if we could get them both, which is the one, one placement. So we'll probably place down here. And, well, actually, if we place right here, no, actually, if we place right here, use a governor to offset the loyalty, we can get access both all of sources with one city. So let's try that. All right, so on turn 86, it appears that Coop had a, a Apparently the same settling spot in mind as he actually not quite because this is he settled one square south of where I wanted to settle but he apparently is having loyalty issues there so I guess better uh better him than me um so where I happened to land when he did this actually is within range of these two here so I think actually I'm going to go ahead and, and just settle in this spot here. Um, that seems reasonable enough. I could go one square back this way actually and get the river instead of this pond, which is a little bit better. I think we will do that. So move one back this way and we will take that river. So we're still going to be able to get one, uh, one olive and one diamond. So Coop sort of uh, hosed us over there. So on turn 88 here, something a little bit interesting. So this cotton here is going to allow us to place an industry on here. And that's even, and even though we don't have a, it doesn't look like we have a second improved cotton source anywhere. This one was improved, but the volcanic eruption destroyed the improvement. So, and this is still going to allow us to build this. So I'll go ahead and see if that works because I think here, this city might be better off with uh, uh, the gypsum-based um, buff anyway, if we can get that. So we'll go ahead and take cotton here, I guess. Let's see if that, that does work. And it, yeah, it did allow us to build it, even though we didn't have the second the second improved resource. So that's, that's interesting. Um, hmm. All right, well, that's um, where we are on that. And I guess... What we'll do with this 30% military buff is we'll hope to swap, uh, we'll hope to get a stock exchange in each and then swap these and see if those buffs stack. So we have lapsed quite a few turns here, um, but it does take a while to get up through the civics tree or the science tree, but we're almost to the point where we will unlock corporations here. But I wanted to call out the monopolies. So monopolies... You will start getting tourism from them immediately as soon as you get a monopoly, but you cannot see the total amount of resources on the map until you unlock mercantilism. So it is, um, mercantilism will let you see, hold on, we will take a look at this. So once you've unlocked this, and the developer showed this on the video, but you can see what percentage of you control, and you can see that cotton that we talked about, where I just uh, ha got had um, not that much use for it, but it was like a military boost. There's only three sources of cotton on an entire map, and I control two of them, so that gives me a monopoly on that. Monopolies are 60% or more, and they this explanation is not the best explanation. It, it's a little bit... Um, confusing because it says each monopoly gives tourism to the only player based upon the number of resources controlled multiplied by the number of former players that do not control an instance of the monopolized resource okay so when it says it gives you tourism it's not generating its own tourism you have to have something that has tourism to begin with so uh, if you look at the cultural victory screen it is actually a tourism modifier so you can see that I'm getting plus 50% from the monopoly on that cotton. And I've seen some reports on this um, 
being a very very like broken source of culture or of tourism early in the game by getting a couple of heroic relics or relics and then using anansi and maui to sort of manipulate the resources if you can get a couple of scarce resources you can stack up tourism wins very fast so i just wanted to call that out in regards to monopolies there's not a special unlock for it but there is an unlock for being able to see the global resources i did want to make one other call out in terms of the uh resource monitor here so this appears to only account for resources that are actually under the control of a player because remember we talked about the olives here about how i could grab up these olives and um i obviously there are olives on the map but there's it, it, it's not going to be listed so let, let's actually buy this tile and see what happens so we're going to purchase that tile And then we'll we'll come back and and improve it here, and then see see what happens on uh, after we do that. So we'll improve it here on the next turn. Well, actually, I won't be able to get there with the with the worker. So we have the base resources within our border now. So it's not it's that that doesn't get it to show up yet. So now we'll come over and improve it. And we'll take a look to see what happens here. So just give me one, one second. We're getting there eventually, as soon as I get through all of this. All right, so now we'll be able to check this here. Now, actually, it might be another turn because I'm crossing the river here. So, all right, so nothing showing up. All right, so sorry, you have to bear with me for one more turn. All right, all right, now we're gonna see. All right, so let's take a look at what happens here. A flood is what's happening, a mo moderate flood, all right. Uh, oh, this is a good timing actually. So we just unlock corporations. So w effectively what the corporation will do is, um, and let me see if I can get a worker out there because we can wrap up the video after um, we showed this but first let's do this now we'll add this okay so that's interesting so it 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 does it doesn't so it doesn't auto only account it does account for all of it on the map but until somebody has improved a source of it you will not see any of it now the interesting thing is that it says i control two out of 28 but i only have that one improved source so somewhere else in my empire i have olives in my in the border that i haven't improved i guess um but and it's so it's counting any unimproved resource because let's, let's see with, with this salt here Yeah, so it counts unimproved ones in your borders still, so that's interesting. All right, so we need another worker, so I will just, um, do I have enough money to buy a worker or builder? No, I will next turn though, and then we will, I'll show how the, um, the corporation works here. So just give me one moment. While I finish this turn out, I'll just pick whatever here. Something. Archaeologist. Alright. And. 
I don't I need to And the stock exchanges are where you can put products. So um, actually I have a great merchant available and I think I, I thought I had an unused one right, right here. So we will show that here real quick. So let me move over here. I will show both of these things. I'll just All right. So we'll build a, we'll get a builder here next turn over here and then we'll show how this works. And I actually forgot that um you can do the products with the great merchant without having the corporations unlocked, I believe. So let's um All right. All right, so if we come over here with the great merchant over here, now you see that they have this build improvement corporation. So that will buff this amount of the yields. And oh, actually, all right. So that that's my bad. The corporation, you do need the great the great merchant needs to go to the corporation, not the builder. So um, the the product is something different. So products are a project that can be created once you built a corp, once you have an industry in place. And I think that I actually could have been doing that already. So no, you do need a corporation in place. All right. So. So this has 20% growth in three housing in the host city. Now I'll go ahead and do that. So we have the Royal Select Salt Limited Liability Company. Oh, they're way ahead of their time, LLC. All right. Um, so now it's doubled the amount of the bonus, 40% growth and six housing. So now we have more of that. And now it will unlock this here. Now we don't have an available space because you need to put it in a seaport or a stock exchange and we don't have any built, but this will give them, this will give the base uh, industry level bonus, not the corporation level bonus here when put into another city. So like when I finish this, this uh, stock exchange up here, you could run this prod, this salt corporation product and then put it in there like a great work. So that's how that would work. So probably don't need to see any more here. That covers all of our bases for um, for the corporations mode. So um, now interestingly enough here, somebody else must have gotten cotton because I'm not getting that, that mod. One of three under control. So that is really strange because nothing changed in terms of of this. It must have been like a buggy update. Because remember when we earlier in the in the play, we created this without having an improvement on here, and it let us do that. So actually, before we wrap up, let's go ahead and and buy a builder here and see um, and see what happens. Because this, that should have updated. This is this was destroyed a long time ago. So we we want to see what happens here. Other than this archer getting killed. Oh no! I said other than the archer getting killed. All right. So now let's see. One of three. So I, I think that this should, like just should have, not. Now it's two of three. So yeah, I don't know. Like this wasn't improved before, and it just like for some reason it must have just not updated correctly. 
So, but now that modifier is back. It's that's a pretty powerful modifier, plus fifty percent just for having uh, one one luxury. And I know I think that they that that there's there's a video of one of the popular uh, content creators have gained like fourteen hundred percent or something absurd like that. So, anyway, that should cover all of the uh, the corporations monopolies content that you would need to know. Um, sorry that we didn't get as far as actually getting a product installed, but all, basically all you need to do is, uh, take, finish this, finish the product and have a, an open space in a stock exchange or seaport. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in and, um, stick around if you, or well, or subscribe, subscribe and like, or whatever that stuff. It's been a long video. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks folks. Take care.